Uh, I've got the list of under the radar games that I would like for you to choose from. And basically what this is, is I'm going to uh, tell Mark uh, to pick one of these five games that you might not think about because it's not a marquee game. Uh, but these are games that, Hey, you know what? If you take a closer look, you'll see that these, these are pretty good games. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, do this in alphabetical order. So we've got Eastern Carolina at Liberty because Liberty is, uh, still playing really good football over there. Uh, e even though they haven't maybe been covering as much, uh, East Carolina, we, we you know, we, we uh, will they be able to surprise Liberty here? Cause I actually think East Carolina might surprise Liberty this week. Uh, you also have Michigan State at Boston College. We know what Bill O'Brien's doing so far with the upset win, competitive loss last week in Missouri. But, I, I mean, you and I are big Jonathan Smith fans. And is he off to a great start so far yeah. with that upset win against Maryland? He's got a young quarterback that's been erratic. He's throwing big touchdown passes. He's also throwing some interceptions. But they've got a five-star recruited wide receiver and they are playing really good football. So I think that's going to be a tough football game. And then you also have Toledo at Western Kentucky, Tulane at Lafayette, and Virginia at Coastal Carolina. You've got a Virginia team that has not been a road favorite in about five or six years. And they're going to Coastal. We know how tough Coastal can be at home. They're off to a really good start. So I think those are five really nice under-the-radar games. It's going to make it tough for you to choose one. Well, you know, I'm going to zero in on either East Carolina at Liberty or Michigan State at Boston College. I know Liberty's got a bigger game on deck. I believe it's Appalachian State. And this is a real sticky East Carolina football team that is going to make some noise this year. They're going to be in a bowl game this football season here. And this is an opportunity for them to put a big notch in their belt to knock off a, a name group of five team. Not, not, they don't, they're not as good as their name says this year, but they're still Liberty and they're still a top quality name. And that is I, next week. They're at Appalachian State. Yeah. Yes. And Boston College, I don't have, I don't know in front of me if you can look at this, if they have anybody on deck next week, BC. They've gotten off to this great start, as you mentioned here, with Bill O'Brien. And Michigan State's done the same thing with Jonathan Smith here. And I think Michigan State is going to be a top quality Jonathan Smith like underdog all season long here. I want to play them plus the points here as well. And I would just love to know, tell me if Boston College has got anybody looking ahead on, this, in the, on tap after this. Yeah, I don't think they do. Uh, so let me check. I didn't put it in my notes. Uh, no, uh, they got Western Kentucky. That's it. No, that, that's not a look ahead. Okay. No. So out of all this, give me East Carolina against Liberty in the upset. Yeah, uh, I, I like that as well. Uh, again, I think uh, East Carolina is is uh, I, I think they're they're playing a little bit better so far this year. And like I said, Liberty just isn't not it's just not winning as convincingly. One of the reasons could be because their thousand yard receiver transferred. I think he's at LSU, and that's a big loss to their passing offense. Um, but as far as those games, and is is that the game though that you? So that's also the game then that you would want to watch, other than For the sure. other five. Okay, I would want to watch it because I think we, what we're looking at are two definite bowl teams. We're likely the same thing with Michigan State and Boston College, uh, which probably holds a little bit more intrigue, easier for the networks to sell. But I think this East Carolina team is going to be sticky good, and I think Liberty's down a notch this year. So right. I like to watch that because I'll probably, like you probably, will be playing East Carolina on a money line here. Yeah, uh, it's not a double digit, but I will be playing them anyway. I think they're about plus 230. By the way, 14 and 7, ATS, last 21 as a road dog. Liberty has not covered a spread so far this year. And by the way, they have played an FCS opponent, New Mexico State, and UTEP. And they had to come back in the last minute to beat New Mexico State a couple of weeks ago. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and then uh, the other, by the way, Toledo, what, are, what an amazing win for the program last week, just blowing out Mississippi State, going to an SEC team on the road. And this uh, the, the MAC is off to a hell of a start this year with Bowling Green nearly upsetting Penn State, Northern Illinois upsetting Notre Dame, Toledo blitzing Mississippi State. I wonder if it's because, and again, I have to do some more homework on this. Maybe you know, because I know this is something that's big in your research, but I just wonder whether or not that there's just a, it's the max. So I just wonder if there's just a lot of returning starters. Uh, the guys are used to playing with each other. Uh, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe there's a lot of seniors on their teams, but whatever it is, it's working. Well, what happens with the MAC generally, Greg, is this, is uh, in the month of September, they'll play these non-cons. They're usually outclassed. They're playing them for big checks, big money checks, half-million-dollar checks. 
and the other team just tend to look down and play down to their level. It's just that simple. By the end of the football season, they're scratching and clawing to become bowl eligible. They make a bowl and they get blown out in a bowl game. So this is their time for the Mac to shine right now. Toledo was expected to be down this year, and then they pull out that big monster upsetting as Mississippi oh, yeah. State. You know, that speaks volumes, uh, not only for the uh, for the Toledo, but for the conference here as well. So I wouldn't put it past uh, the Mac here. Uh, one of our writers in our newsletter called, them, called it the SAC, the Spread Action Conference, <laughs> because they're pulling down a lot of money right now, our teams out of the Mac, to start the football season.